every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. He said, this is, this is how you get into that frame of mind. This is, this is how you run the race successfully. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. I like this part. This doesn't get enough attention because the popular part of this, this chapter is the first two verses. But I like what he's really fixing to get into here. He starts going into the things that Jesus went through. And he's, he's telling us, he's admonishing us, if Jesus can do it, we can do it. I'd like to skip down now to verse number 12. Boy, the Lord has been working my motor over right here. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight for your feet and make straight paths for your feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way. And where has this phrase been my whole life? Like a pinball has rolled around in my head and spirit for two or three weeks now. Watch this phrase. But, but let it rather be healed. That's got a ring to it. And I know when you look at that, that if I were to ask you to extrapolate from that 13th verse what you think the most powerful word there is, if we were to take a consensus, most of you would lift the word healed there. But really... There's no reason to even think about the word healed if you don't first underscore the word rather. Because rather, I, the first time I said this, I said that rather speaks of choice. I've since gone back and corrected that. Rather screams of choice. And this is so biblically sound because how many times did Jesus say, Wilt thou be healed? Wilt thou be made whole? And, and, and we can attach so many contingencies, we can attach so many conditions. We feel like that healing is something that is conditioned. Well, if I had enough faith and we somehow we feel like faith is synonymous with feeling. Let me tell you something. The only thing you need to be healed is to make a choice. And I want to preach this morning for a little while. After last night trying to find somewhere to eat, I've come, uh, I'm clued in about Beaumont, Texas. If you're hungry, you just better go through a drive through somewhere or go to Waffle House because it's an hour and a half wait anywhere you try to go eat. So I'm not even going to worry about all that today. In fact, if we preach long enough, you won't have to worry about it because Everybody, already, they've already eaten and they've left the restaurant, so you won't have to worry about waiting. Praise God. They don't know me well enough yet to be messing with them like that. Brother Carr, tell them it's all right. Just smile and tell them it's okay. 
I want to preach this morning for a little while. I didn't hear that. Did you say it's probably not okay? <laughs> I want to preach this morning for a little bit. Rather be healed. Rather be healed. Before you're seated, I know you've been standing a while. I want you one more time to put your hands together and give God a great shout of praise all over this house. Hallelujah! Come on, do that just a minute more. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can be seated. Thank you for being so kind and standing so patiently. Thank you so much. My wife told me one time I... Um, I just, sometimes you get in the flow and you forget to let people be seated. She said, you ought to know what it feels like one time to just be on these high heels. I was like, you really don't want me to put high heels on. That's not what you want. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 11 is what some have coined as the Hall of Faith. It's kind of the anchor in my mind as I read the book of Hebrews, even though it is the back end, verse or chapter 11 is towards the back end of the book. Hebrews chapter 11 kind of, in my mind, anchors this whole thing here. And he goes down through, and you, you know what's there, and I, I won't take the time, but he goes through names that we are all familiar with, heroes and heroines of the faith. And when we move, understanding that, and you know this, but when the translators got a hold of this, that it was broke up into chapters, but sometimes it helps, and then sometimes you need to also take that number out and understand that it's a scroll, and it just kind of, it, there's something to mine when it's just rolled. I believe that in, this is a case in point. I feel like to really understand what I want to drive home. Now, I, I hope it's okay. I, 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 I'm not trying to be presumptuous. But I really want to preach to this church this morning. Okay? I, I want you to understand in time where we're at. Okay? And, and so if you take it and you just roll it and you move the 12 out, after the writer has moved through all of this so eloquently and poignantly, you, you arrive to where we began reading in, in chapter 12. And you understand that the Bible says that we are surrounded. We are compassed about with such a great cloud of witness. The way I like to see this is it's the eternal grandstands of time. Praise God. These people have, this is what's important. These people have fought their battles. These people have ran their race. I cannot emphasize this strong enough, though. It is important that we understand that though they died and they died in faith 
And now they are in the eternal grandstands of time. That the race that they ran is not a different race than what we're running. It's the same race, folks. And they, they ran their leg of the race. They fought their battles in faith, praise God. In fact, to draw you into this, if you were to strain and begin to look through eternity's grandstands, you would see more than just Moses there. Somebody's got a grandmother in those grandstands. Somebody's got an elder. Somebody's got an old pastor uh, in those grandstands. Somebody's got a parent in those grandstands. Somebody's known a prayer warrior, come on, that has died in faith. I have prayed, and I don't want to weird you out and don't rebuke my prayer, but I have prayed for the effect of this, that you could feel now what I have felt for about the last 30 days, maybe a little longer, probably about the turn of the year. Brother, Brother Carr, I have felt like somebody is watching me. I have been in airports and literally the sensation is so strong. I have turned to look over my shoulder. Come on, feeling like somebody was staring at me. I have laid in the hotel bed at night and literally felt like somebody was standing over in the corner of the room watching me. Come on, I'm preaching to the apostolic church of Beaumont right now. It's important that you leave this building. You hear me? You can't shake this. You've got to understand that we have a responsibility. There is a race to run. There is a battle to fight. Come on. There is. What I felt and what I want. I want you. I have prayed that you could feel this. In fact, early this morning, I prayed that you could feel it in this service. I pray that you could feel that phenomenon, that sensation of somebody looking at you. It adds to it. It brings to life. It brings to animation what I'm talking about. That feeling of somebody looking at us. What you must understand. It is our fathers who have have run this race before us. They are focused on something. And what I have felt, what I have felt, the boring, focused eyes of our forefathers, I gathered in my mind I finally came to the conclusion that they're focused on me. But this church must understand what I'm about to tell you. The forefathers, those that have run before us, are no longer sitting and watching, observing. They are on their toes. Some of them, some of them have begun to filter and trickle out of the grandstands of time. They're focused on us, Brother Carr, but they're focused on something else. And Brother Marks, what are they focused on? They're focused focused on us but they're focused on the finish and the pressure that we feel in the spirit as the elders that have gone before us Moses included, Abraham included, your parents, your grandparents, those that died in faith included. They are focused on us, but they are also focused on the finish. What are you saying, Brother Marks? I'm saying this race has been run, and it has been run well. It has been run with strength. It has been run with faith. It has been run with perseverance. It has been run with joy. It has been run with prayer. It has been run with righteousness. It has been run. Come on, I need you to help me here this morning. Come on, this race has been run. It has been run right. It has been run with purity. It has been run.
but what God has allowed me to feel. And I pray that you will adopt this today and you would feel it and understand it. Is this generation has rounded the corner and the forefathers, come on, the forefathers of faith realize that the finish is now in sight with bated breath. We have now entered the last leg of this race. And the forefathers of eternity have set up out of the grandstands of time and begun to trickle down along the edges with their eyes fastened on this generation. What will they do? with what we have given them. What will they do with this message? What will they do with the anointing? What will they do? What will they do with their separation? What will they do with their stands of righteousness inside and outside of holiness? What will they do with their worship? What will they do with their mandate? What will they do with their mission? What will they do? Some of you have been around here long enough. I want you to look up on this platform. You can see it in flesh and blood. I want you to think about the sacrifices that that venerable 90-year-old man has made. I want you to think about his generation. I want you to think about the blood, the sweat, and the tears. You hear me? There's not coming another generation. Sister Carr, that man runs the relay. Noah, I run fast and I run steady. But those first three runners, while they run fast and they run steady, the focus is the transition. But you hear this generation. There will be no transition. The last runner, their focus must be on finishing. And the question is not will this be transition. This is not an issue of transition. This is an issue of will and how will we finish. If you could see in time the ribbons, not the ribbons awarded to those because this race is not to the swiftest. No, this race is to he that endureth unto the end. I'm not talking about the ribbons as far as places or where you stand on the stage. I'm talking about that ribbon that indicates a finish. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is wrapping up and I'm telling you, we've got to be focused on finishing. We've got to be focused on making it. I want to know, is there anybody in this building that's got your mind made up to make it? It's never, it's never a good time to get bitter. It's never a good time to get bitter. But let me tell you something. Bitterness now, now more than any time is not a good time to be bitter because this is not just about you being lost. This is about finishing. And I believe that we owe it to God. I believe we owe it to those who have run before us to finish. Somebody shout, finish! Shout, finish!
I see Moses there. And he's fastened on me and he's fastened on you. But Moses, he goes from us, this generation, to the ribbons that indicate the end of the race. And he, his focus goes from us and then back to his eyes are fastened. What will they do? Will they sputter and flame out? Will they be overtaken by carnality? Will they, will they be overcome with worldliness? Will they give in to the pressure to become like everybody else or look like everybody else? Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost spoke to me. You young people, especially you hear me, and I'm going to preach this in the future, but it's time for us to become proud of our peculiarity. You didn't hear what I just said. It's time for us to become proud of our peculiarity. But Brother Carr, I just don't feel like that the way they ran and the way God does things that God put this all together for us just to drag a leg in. I don't believe that we finish by crawling in. I don't believe, you better hear this preacher right now. I don't believe we finish by limping in. I like all of the stories. They're good and they're great. I don't believe we finish by somebody else helping us in. You know what? We, believe, we owe it to God. We owe it to our forefathers. I believe it's the will of God for us to finish strong. Finish on top. Finish in revival. Finish People talking in tongues. Finish baptizing people in Jesus' name. I hear that old voice. I hear it often. Bubba, what you feeling? Bubba, he would always say, speaking of my comrades and those in my generation, Brother Ewing would say, what you boys going to do? Brother McLean, how many times he put his hand on my shoulder. I didn't want to hear him say it because I didn't want to think about him dying. But I remember on many occasions him telling me, it's on your shoulders now, son. I've ran my race. Let me clean that up. He ran his part of the race. And that last runner is known as the anchor. And it's not necessarily the one that's the swiftest. It's not the strength of his legs. It's not always even the strength of his numbers in the quarter mile. That anchor, if you study the psychology of relay rushes, the strength of that anchor, that last runner, his mind can he finish can he finish the crowding because oftentimes there are those on the finish that will run dirty there's crowding there's chaos there's confusion there's grunting there's sounds there's oh God are you hearing me right now we gotta be mentally strong folks Remember how this race started. On your mark. 
My God, I don't have notes right now, but I feel what I'm preaching. Remember how this started on your mark. Not your neighbor's mark. Not what the devil's doing. Not what somebody across town's doing. Well, I got family over here. This church over there. That church. No. I'm telling you what's going on right here. Come on. I'm not going to be distracted by the compromise of somebody else. Come on. As for first. As for the apostolic church. We're going to run in faith. We're going to run and worship. We're going to run and pray. On your mark. Not on your neighbor's mark. And I'm telling you, there's people who are become, they're becoming so consumed with how everyone else is running. Good to see you, Sister Barry. So consumed with how everyone else is running. I believe the Apostle Paul, I believe he wrote the book of Hebrews. I'm not going to die on that mountain, but that's what I believe. One of the reasons I want to paramount to several others is because, linguistically speaking, the style of writing... Some of the other people they want to attribute this to doesn't, it just sounds like the Apostle Paul. And, and the Apostle Paul, he used, is that for me? Thank you. The Apostle Paul, he used common similes and metaphors and illustrations. He was constantly talking about farmers and soldiers and athletes and the answer is not to join the choir. The answer is not to be standoffish. The answer is not to just keep avoiding Brother Carr because you know Brother Carr wants you to get involved. Say it. Say it like you believe it. The Holy Ghost, if I've ever heard from him in my life, spoke to me and said, I want to hear the morale, which then is going to affect the motivation and the momentum of this church. It's going to affect you, and in, and in return, it's going to help this church, and it's going to help you finish. But there's a healing got to come to the morale of this church. It's got to come to, it's got to, come to the morale of individuals in this church. You can be used of God. It doesn't matter what they've said. I don't care what, they, I don't, I don't care what they've said. Well, can I preach right now? Can I preach that right now? Can I preach right now? Well, well, I screwed up. Yeah, so did Simon Peter. Three times. Did you see Jesus ever come to him and say, Give me the keys, Simon? didn't take the keys back but I tell you what he did have to do <laughs> he had to touch his morale he didn't tell the prodigal son you can't have your room back you can't have your shoes back you can't have your keys back but I tell you what he did do the first thing he dealt with is he spoke to his morale and he said, I'm not going to listen to this servant stuff. You're my son. I'm standing in defense of gifts and callings and anointings and spiritual placements, impartations, things that was put into people before you were ever a thought in your mother's mind. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. 
rather be healed? Wilt thou be made whole? Well, I thought healing was all up to God. I thought peace was all up to God. No. He said, let the peace of God. It'll rule. Brother Carr, one translation says, let the peace of God call call balls and strikes. God will be the umpire in your life if you will let him. But God can't judge anything in your life as long as you're the judge. Is all of you, is all, I'm just telling you, you hear me loud and clear. I've done, been doing this 22 years full time. I'm telling you, if I, I know if I've ever said anything, I'm saying, I've never said this before that I can remember, but I'm saying it here today. If you think changing churches was enough to keep you from turning your feet out of this race, you're wrong. You're going to have to change your attitude and your spirit and your outlook and your in look. I've had people look at me like that before. I ain't worried about that. They looked at me. Why God was using me like this at 18 years old, I don't know. Can you imagine how they looked at an 18-year-old kid like that? They looked at me like that, like that when I was 18. It sure doesn't bother me when you look at me like that and I'm 40. I've been looking at that for 22 years. What I'm saying is right. Be healed. Let's finish. As those forefathers are fastened on the finish of this race, glancing up every once in a while at where we're at and what we're doing. Let's finish. Let's finish strong. Let's finish clean. Let's let us finish undefiled. Let's finish. Do you know, and I mentioned this at a meeting we were at the other night, so y'all forgive me. But one of the seven signs of life is the body's ability to eliminate. And I'm telling you spiritually, if you've lost your ability to get rid of stuff, you're dead and don't even know it. Another sign, seven of the seven signs of life is the body's ability to equalize and keep everything in balance internally. If you can't do that, you're dead. And spiritually, if you can't learn, well, I feel, well, I feel. If you keep hanging on to your feelings, you're going to find your feelings being in direct rebellion to the will of God in your life because you're letting your feelings, you are letting your feelings sabotage your future be healed let's stand I want to make a call first please don't let's don't rush please I I got stuff I want to get to tonight but I feel like that Last night was critical, but this morning is, this this is it right here. I need a husband to get your wife by the hand. And you know that you know that you know that the Holy Ghost has placed its finger so perfectly on the situation. You need to go get your wife. If she's standing by you, you need to take her by the hand. And you need to bring her down here as an act of faith today that we're going to be healed. We're going to be healed of this.
you know what this is. It's not one, it's not two, it's not three or four couples. I'm thankful for the ones that are stepping out right now, but there's many. And I know there's others that need to be healed, but I'm going to start with these married families right here, and then I'm going to let you singles and you young people and you elders and the rest of you, I'm going to let you filter in because I want healing to come to all of us. But come on in here. If your husband's not here, come on. If your wife's not here, come on. Get down here. You kids, get ready because here in a few minutes, if you're here, I want you to find your mom and dad. Not yet, but here in just a few minutes. Come on. Come out of those risers. The morale. Let something happen in the morale. We can I said, you can. Someone say, I can. Don't say, I can. You can if you're healed. But if you're not healed, something's got to happen in you. You've got to let God do something. Way down deep in here. Way down deep in here. You've got to let him do something way down deep in here. Way down deep in here. Way down deep in here. If you're in this building and you don't, you're not a part of this group, but if you're here and you say, we need healing, you've preached to us. I want you to trickle out from where you're at, and I want you to fill in these aisles behind these people that are already standing here. Quit. Quit. No. Quit? No. Throw in the towel? No. Look at me. You can only tread water so long, dude. You can only tread water so long. You can only float on your back so long. I love all the survival stories of living on tarps for days and weeks, but it, it, you can only do that so long. And somebody, a weekend like this, a service like this comes by and it plucks you out of the stormy seas of life or you die. Period. There's too much at stake. Too much at stake. Be healed. you got to open your heart and you got to open all the little doors in your heart. And you got to let Jesus know this morning, I'm not shutting you out of anywhere. You have access to, to it all. And I'm putting all this in your hand. I'm going to pull the drain and I'm going to let the dirty water run out and we're going to run fresh water in and we're going we're gonna to hold the baby. You listen to me. I remember where I was at. I know where I was at. I was teetering on an edge. My feet were turning out of the race. I know mentally where I was at. Fraudulence. Fraudulence. The height of hypocrisy and fraudulence. Fake. It looks so real. It was fool's gold. I'm going to tell you, when you when you put all of your eggs in a basket and you think it's gold, and then you have to live through the pain of it turning out to be fool's gold, you feel conned. You feel naked. You feel humiliated. I remember where I was at, and I was laying in the carpet of a pastor's office, and I was begging God to help me. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, you know, in order for there to be a counterfeit, there's got to be something that's real. And I remember air. I grabbed the baby, so to speak. And I said, oh, God. Let's get this bathwater drained. 
But there's some things that I just can't give up. Be healed. something powerful it's not coming it's already here it started last night if you weren't here just plug into it right now but there's deep deep waters these are the deep waters that the prophet Ezekiel seen you can't you can't walk in these waters these waters can only be swam in but I want you to lift your hands and I want you to open your heart and your spirit and I want you to cry out to the Holy Ghost. Come on and let God, let these healing waters sweep across your soul. Come on right now, come on. They're gonna sing something, but you open your spirit and let the Holy Ghost minister to you right now. Come on, would you pray with somebody? If, if you're here, you take your liberty, but. I want you to pray that great healing would flow through this place right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if you've been wounded by religion. I, I apologize for that. But there is something that's real. There is an experience. There, there is an experience that's real. into this. Make up in your mind. I'm going to let the Holy Ghost heal me today. Just like the blinded eye needs open. The arms that droop down, they need healing. The knees that are weak, they need healing. church to help me pray there's gifts at stake there's anointings and talents and abilities and come on I'm telling you what I know there's key people there's big fish in this building right now
your dreams be healed. May your confidence be healed. May come on, I'm preaching to you. May your hope be healed. May your faith be healed. May your confidence and leadership be healed. May your spirit be healed. May your heart be healed. May your future be healed. some of you made your mind up that you weren't going back there. You weren't even going to let your mind go back there anymore. I'm talking about being used of God. I'm talking, I'm talking about being active in a church. I'm talking about being involved. I'm here to remind you. I'm here, I'm here to remind you that's not the way it works. Come on. God is not going to let you forget the things that he's put in you. You're an asset to the kingdom. Be healed. You're an asset to the kingdom. Be healed. you're working for God. You think you can just blend in here? You think God's going to be okay with you just being a wallflower somewhere on the wall? No. You've got a purpose. You've got a purpose here. God's got a purpose for you. He brought you here for a purpose. He put you here to do something. You're a piece to this. Cry out. Open your heart. Cry out.
Sing that with them, right? Jesus, you're all. Jesus, come on, sing that. Come on, sing it out. Jesus, you're all. Jesus, you're all. you just hold your hands out in front of you just feel after God right now come on just hold your hands out in front of you just feel after what he's doing right now
Come on, lift your hands again. Come on, there's a work of the Spirit here right now, folks. You can, you can feel that. You can sense that. Come on, open your heart. You know what I feel? With, with everything factored in, you know how I feel? I still feel like falling in love with Jesus was the greatest thing I ever did. Do you feel that way? <laughs> it's still the greatest thing. The pains, the hurts, the rejections, the confusion, the seasons of life. I want him to know before we close this out today that I still feel like the best thing I ever did was let myself fall in love with him. Do you feel that way? Come on. Do you feel that way? Do you really feel that way? Would you express it?
I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, you made the choice. Don't turn back on the choice you made this morning. You chose rather to be healed. You chose rather to be healed. Don't, don't turn around and allow flesh to cause you to pick up what you just placed down. Don't cause flesh to allow you to clean off what he just poured the blood all over. Hold on to it. Hold on to it. See, I, I made a choice. And I'm going to live with that choice. And I'm going to walk with that choice. And I'm going to be empowered by that choice. Brother Marks, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now let's turn that thanks into the Lord right now and thank Him right now for His healing. Thank Him for His Word. Thank Him for His power. Hallelujah, thank you. Oh, wonderful God. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful God. You are so good. We thank you. Magnify your great name. Your great name. The wonderful thing about God. He knows his sheep. We did not sit at Waffle House last night and talk about y'all. First off, I couldn't believe I was at Waffle House. But secondly, God knows where we're at. He knows what we need. I'm thankful that we serve a great God. Thankful that we serve a great God. Amen. Let's go forward and do something about what we received this morning. Make sure you're back early this evening, at least by 6 o'clock for prayer. The church will be open at 5 o'clock. You can come on in and go to the prayer room. But let's get in there and get a hold of God. Invite someone to the house of the Lord that they can be healed tonight as well. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.